Hello and welcome to Dawn Chorus Writes, a miraculous ladybug fan fiction and audio fiction. This is the new series, All I Want for Christmas, part of Holiday Magic Season. So, massive shout out to the artist, all her information is down in the description below. Go and send her some festive love and send me some festive love by smashing that like button. Comment down below what you think of it and what will happen next. And subscribe if you haven't already because this is part four and there is so many good festive treats and just regular miraculous treats coming your way very soon. I hope you enjoy. Part four. A cozy Adrian's POV. Tonight, Adrian, or should he say cat, was spending the evening with his princess invited by Ladybug. She had done that before, suggested leaning on Marinette when Ladybug couldn't step in and he had thought they were super friends, with her being multi mouth. That's right, the whole mouse thing. Okay, think of that later. Anyway, Marinette, she had always made sure she had been there for him in one form or another and this evening she was doing it again, inviting Cat round to watch White Christmas. It was one of those films which he had been on his wish list but hadn't had the heart to watch. It was one of his mother's favourite holiday films, the words of the songs filtering out of her lips when she thought no one was watching and they had finally made plans to watch it before she went missing. The memory caused his heart to pang with grief. It had been a few years now, but he was finally getting around to seeing it, and he couldn't think of anyone better than his princess to watch it with. The only issue was, part of him wished she had invited Adrian around this evening instead of Cat. He still hadn't found a chance to talk since Saturday. Yesterday's afternoon after the Kuma battle was taken up with a different battle, which included snowballs. And yet, now he had confirmed it in his heart and mind that Marinette was everything. His lady and his princess only made him love her more. Plag still insisted that he didn't have concrete evidence that she was Ladybug, but maybe that's something Cat could do tonight, along with trying to figure out her feelings towards Adrian. Yes, she was thankful for him, but did she love him? There was too much on the line. If he should speak those words out loud to her, he had to be certain he would hear them back. His heart couldn't take another rejection, knowing it was coming from both of them. Adrian picked up the CD Marinette had given him. Number three, White Christmas, Bing Crosby. This song brings warmth to my heart and a sense of comfort, even when seasons don't turn out the way I planned. I come back to this song and it brings me home. The tradition every year as I curl up with Maman and Papa watching the film, eating festive treats and glow in my heart means the world to me. I hope with all my heart, Kitty, that you have such a tradition to lean on when times get hard. And if not, you are always welcome at mine. He placed on the track, the famous notes trickling out before the soothing voice of Bing filled the place around him, dreaming of a white Christmas, describing the ideal. He hadn't realised, but his princess had already invited him along tonight. Ladybug was simply telling him the time and date to attend. She really wanted him to feel the spirit of the season. She may not be in love with her kitty, and yet she was showing him love in a different way. Her way. Are you really playing that song again? For a thousand time? It was bad enough when it came out. Never mind on repeat in your room. Plag groaned. You remember when Bing first sang it? 1942 wasn't that long ago. Not for me, kid. Now, I can't believe I'm saying this, but are we going to school today? At least there you can't play it. Adrian noticed for the first time Plag zipping back and forth, taking pour full of cheese into his school bag. Extra supplies to get me through the day. You want me all charged up for this evening, don't you? For your princess? Plag teased. Yeah, but 
I'm going to be stinking all day now. No. I think only by second period. They'll be gone by then. Cheese gremlin. Adrian yanked his bag away as Plague tried to put the last load in. That's enough. I won't be able to fit my books in at this rate. Let's go. Adrian called out as the knock sounded at his door. Marinette had arrived slightly late to class this morning, which meant he had missed the opportunity to talk with her, escort her to class, or the possibility of holding her hand again. He missed her touch. But his heart sang as the melody of White Christmas floated behind him as she hummed out the tune while studying. He accepted it, as if it was a secret message for his ears alone, that tonight he would share this magical tradition with her. She was taking him home. He glanced back, catching her gaze and received a wide smile, a twinkle in her eyes and a blush on her cheeks in return. All he could do was grin, his heart pounding in his chest, for this girl made the words too hard. But it was a grin that couldn't be wiped off his face, no matter what happened during the day. This evening would be perfect. He had ordered through a local florist, a large poncetia, but he hadn't realised how big it would be in its golden pot and extra flourishes of Christmas decorations. He wanted to take the Dubanchans a token gift to show how much it meant to him to be invited to tonight. When the florist saw Cat Noir wandering in to collect the order, they threw in a box of chocolates and requested a photo to place on their website. Approved by Cat Noir went down well in the public of Paris. Instead of his usual entrance, jumping onto the balcony and tapping at the window like a stray cat, no wonder she referred to him as a tomcat, this evening he knocked on the side door. Last minute nerves filled his mind with thoughts. Maybe she hadn't invited him. Maybe it was a guilt gesture. Maybe she had just been polite. And yet, the moment Marinette opened the door and saw a cat peering around the enormous red plant, she grinned. Welcome, kitty. Come on in, if you think you can with that, she chuckled. It's for your folks. I couldn't come empty-handed. That, what would they think of this cat? Thank you, kitty. It's very thoughtful and large. Not sure where we're going to put it, but my mum will like it. It's strange, seeing you use the side door instead of at my window, but I'm glad Ladybug could pass the message on. He was grateful the plant was hiding his face as he grinned, watching her cover her tracks like that, pretending one side against the other making him realise how much he did it, as Cat talked about Adrian to his princess, including tonight. I've been looking forward to the film tonight. This film has been on my wish list for a while. You haven't seen White Christmas? Marinette paused, causing Cat to bump into her, but she didn't seem to notice as she spun round to face him. In that case, you're going to love this. My folks love to go all out tonight. She beamed at him. As Marinette opened the door to the apartment, Cat could hear the soft sounds of her parents chatting away with the gentle noise of classic instrumental songs in the background, finished with the smell of warm spices. His heart skipped a beat with excitement. My mom, Papa, Kitty is here, and he has brought you something. Marinette called out, and he felt the heat rising in his cheeks. Perhaps this was too much. Wow, look at this, Tom. Isn't it stunning? Sabrine replied. Is there a cat attached to this, or was it big enough to walk itself up the stairs? Tom chortled, taking the plant and moving to the side table, exposing a bashful cat underneath. Thank you, my son. It's perfect present for my favourite black cat of Paris. As Cat was about to do his usual nervous rub at the back of his neck, he noticed he was still holding the small gift bag. And these are for you, Marinette. He handed her the bag and received a smile in return as she peered inside. Oh, chocolates. Thanks, Kitty. I haven't finished your gift just yet. It should be ready soon. You've made me something? 
He hadn't meant to sound as surprised as he did. Of course I did. Why wouldn't I make my friend a gift for Christmas? Now, come and have a seat. The film is pretty long, so we're going to start it whilst Papa finishes making his famous macaroni and cheese. He guessed being a cat that cheese would be a good bet. She lowered her voice on the last part so that her papa wouldn't hear. Sounds great. My Kwame would love it even more. Oh, in that case, I'll box him up for you to take with you. Papa always makes plenty. She gave him a little wink and grabbed the remote and he noticed the film titles were ready to press play. They had been waiting for him. He had never felt more welcomed even in his own home. As the red titles rolled, playing small snippets of music which will be the featured in the film, Marinette jumped out of her seat once more and bounded for the kitchen. Here you go, Kitty. I hope you like hot mulled cider. She handed him a mug before getting an answer. To be honest, he had never tried it before, but as the warmth seeped into his gloved hands and the smell of sugar, spices and apples hung in the air around him, he already knew he was going to like it. As the film progressed, he couldn't help wonder what he found enticing more. The magic of old Hollywood, or watching Marinette's family bouncing off one another, filtering across the room. Tom doing his own take on the sister song, pretending a pillow was his oversized fan, or Sabrina humming away to the song Dreaming About Snow. Oh, the simple delight at watching Marinette laugh joyfully at her, with her parents, joining in from time to time whilst jumping from her seat every ten minutes, unable to sit still until she picked up her knitting needles with the blue wool. But one of the best parts was how they acted like Cat was just another member of the family, instead of a superhero in their living room, or better yet, a boy dressed as a superhero sitting on the sofa. Here you go, my boy. Tom handed Cat a bowl filled with gooey, cheesy pasta to eat whilst watching the film. Thank you, sir. I mean, Tom, this smells delicious. Adrian had never had a meal on his lap, never mind watching a film surrounded by family. Was this what he had been missing, but never knew it until it existed until this moment? But if Adrian could convince Marinette that he was worthy of her, to hope that one day she would love him as much as he loved her, then could it be possible? If he gained some of her luck, this could be his too? He watched as the character Betty bumps into Bob to naturally break into song, Count Your Blessings, and notices Marinette beside him, lost in her own world singing along to the words, looking wistful as she glanced down at the blue knitting in her hands. What he would have given to lean into her and whisper, she was his most treasured blessing and that he would be happily be her knight on a horse for her. He sighed as a thought popped into his head, maybe this was the opportunity he'd been looking for. Princess, what do you count as your blessings? His voice caught her off guard, becoming flustered and turning a rosy pink colour in her cheeks. Marinette gave Cat a quick glance before focusing her sight on her knitting. It was a move he normally saw her do in front of Adrian, not Cat. I would say I might have more blessings than others do, especially at this time of year. I suppose it links back to being thankful. Cat took over Adrian's inner shyness. You told me, you told someone you were thankful for them. Is that what you mean? He watched as her eyes widened. What did you mean by that? Call it my inner cat curiosity, but I just wondered as it can be taken in various ways. She stood at his face, wondering if her secrets were safe and then glanced over at her parents, who were distracted by other things. To be honest, that is the same issue I'm facing. I don't know in which way the person meant their gesture of thankful. If I'm only a friend or... Her blush deepened and focused back on her blue wool. He had thought he had made his feelings clear to her, 
but now seeing it from her side and how confused he was over the exact same words, how had he not seen it earlier? She didn't realise how much she meant to him and yet hope grew inside of him at her own words and feelings that maybe he had a chance after all. I mean, there has been little gestures since that makes me think. Oh, I don't know. You question how much is in your mind, or if the last second I'll fumble over my words in front of him, unable to express my feels yet again, or take this for example. She held up the blue knitting. This is for him. I'm sitting here watching White Christmas and knitting him a blue hat to go with the exact colour scarf I made him a few years ago. Adrian pictured his beloved blue scarf, the one his father had given him, right? The funny thing is, I can't tell him that. What? I'm confused. Why not? Kat added in. This is going to sound silly, but he doesn't know that scarf is from me. He believes his father had given it to him for his birthday. She smiled at his confused expression. I tried to give it to him at school, but failed, as always. So instead, I dropped it around at his house. I don't know what happened, but the next day at school, he turned up all excited that his father had given it to him. Who was I to spoil that for him, especially when he doesn't have the best? Anyhow, he was happy and I wasn't going to break that for him. Marinette, you're telling me you took the time to make this person a thoughtful gift and you let someone else take credit for it? You never told him, them. He leaned in a little closer, unable to believe what he was hearing. It's not my place to. But here I am making a matching hat. Which, this time I have promised myself I will give it to him. Myself, n no matter what happens. A forlorn look spread across her face. Anyway, enough about my silliness. He moved closer to her, closing the gap and whispered, Marinette, nothing what you have said is silly. It is the opposite of silly. It is selfless. You must really care for this person. I do, but oh, it's complicated. If only things were as simple as the movies. She gestured to the screen, now filled with dancers and singing another song. Thank you, Kitty. You're a good listener. She casually leant her head on his shoulder as if they had done it countless times. Oh. How much he wished he could wrap his arm around her, bringing her in closer. You have said a few times now that how you are here for me, if I need someone. It goes both ways, princess. You can talk to me any time about anything. And this person, whoever they be, is very lucky to have someone like you care about them. Love, you didn't do right by me. Betty sang out from the TV and he could feel his princess tighten up against him. My one love affair didn't get anywhere from the start. The semi Joe who had winter snow in his heart wasn't smart. Love, you didn't do right by me. She said nothing, but he saw in the corner of his eye her hand wiping across her eyes and cheeks, knowing if he commented, she would blame it on the film. But he knew that feeling all too well about being lost and confused. However, this time he could do something about it. Adrian could do something about it. He will do something about it. Tonight, he may not have gotten the evidence he needed to prove to Plague that he was right, she was ladybug and stopped his excuses, but he had discovered so much more. That even if Marinette wasn't ladybug, his heart had been right in choosing her. A girl with so much love and warmth placing other needs before their own. 
willing to sacrifice her own happiness to ensure someone else's was more heroic than anything he had witnessed from Ladybug. Okay, apart from the whole saving Paris thing, but this person who was resting her head against him was a hero with or without a mask, and he would make himself worthy of her. As the song White Christmas sang out from the TV, the four of them all curled up on the sofa, joined in with the music, singing out for all to hear, including Cat. That night, he left his princess and the family he wished for with goodies made with love, a glow in his heart that could melt any ice or snow, and a plan he would implement starting tomorrow. All I want for Christmas is... Thank you for listening to part four of All I Want for Christmas. I uh, so hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you smash that like button if you did. Comment down below your thoughts on what's going to happen next. And make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on future goodies and other treats to come. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.